god what's up and welcome back to kind of funny's jurassic park in review that's right we are ranking reviewing and recapping every movie in the jurassic franchise of course i'm tim gettys and i'm joined by the producer slash seducer nick scarpino that intro every time every time mm-hmm. We're it's laughing worse. with you, Nick. We're laughing. Mm-hmm. With you. No, you're not. I'm definitely you laughing not. at you. Yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> laughing at you. One hundred percent. I don't think I've ever made a point to have the watch stream on every time and have the volume up, but I do for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. That voice you hear, of course, is the big daddy. Game over, Greggy himself, Greg Miller. I'm ready to roll. Let's talk about some dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. I can't wait to talk about the dream with you, Greg. I know you've been waiting for it. I the dream talking around. Alan. Alan, Alan, Alan. with his little claws in the seat in front. <laughs> <laughs> and rounding out the group today because Joey got bit by Jurassic snakes. It's the one and only Nitro Rifle Andy Cortez. G- could we say that maybe it, because it was Jurassic Park that she was missing? It was the compies, the little compies that got her. Yes, the yes. little compies. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's mm-hmm. the reason why. That's the reason why. Compies. Um, of course, this is, kind of, <laughs> this is kind of. I didn't even notice the hands. The Andy. hands that are the best so part. That's so funny. funny. Yeah. Uh, when I was watching it last night, I almost. I was gonna clip this out and like start photoshopping it. As I, <laughs> I, just, I didn't know what to do with the claws. Like I wanted to like have them on Greg's back, maybe, or like maybe it's like holding on to Nick Scarpino's back. I don't know. Who would have been I great? Out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is kind of funny. in review where we rank and review and recap different movie franchises each and every week. We've been doing the Jurassic Park movies to lead into Jurassic World Dominion coming out June 10th. But we're going to be taking a short break from the Jurassic universe to return to where it all began with the MCU in review. Next week, we're going to do a rewatch of Doctor Strange. Uh, I can't believe it's happening. But Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is mere weeks away. Uh, so we're going to be doing the rewatch. Of Doctor Strange. Then the following week will be Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness being added to the ranking. And then the week after that will be Moon Knight being added to the ranking because that is when the finale will have happened. Then after that, we'll return back to Jurassic World um, and so forth and so forth. Very exciting all around. And at Nick's request, I'm just letting everyone know this right now. We're doing something that is going to make our lives infinitely more complicated, but we're doing it and I want to make this happen. Okay. There will be multiple in reviews going on that week, the week we do Jurassic World. If I remember correctly, we'll be doing Jurassic World, Top Gun, yeah. and Top Gun Maverick all yes. in one week. So yes. all you in review fans, prepare your bodies and souls for, for that high octane week of in review action. I t- I'm feel about that, so Nick? excited. I'm so excited about this. And we have to figure out a way to get Snow Mike Mike down to be a part of this, or he's got to go see it. Do they have movies in Tahoe? Do they ship? I don't know. Movies? Everything gets there super late. Everything gets there super late. You have to mm. ski to it. Yeah, God, he just he actually just he watched Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, the fourth yeah. one. Not even yeah. Fallout. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's great. <laughs> Gotta love it. Anyways, uh, so stay tuned for all that stuff, but a whole bunch of really cool stuff coming to in review that you can watch on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You can also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review. And like I always say, if there is a movie franchise that you love, chances are we've already review ranked and recapped it. So go check that out. Um, you can also get the show as we record it and you can also get it ad free by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producers, Molecule, Fargo, Brady, Pranksy, and Anonymous have all done. We appreciate you all so much. Uh, today we're brought to you by Credit Karma. And also, I'm dropping something fun here. A sweet young man named Mario Rivera oh, emailed uh, me uh, and was like, Hey, Tim, I've been following along with Jurassic Park in review, but I already own the movies, so I don't need these digital codes. So, oh. everyone out there right now, Here's the code. Go to universalredeem.com. U Q six five K three T eight B T S W S P five. Redeemed Nine. already. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. I got Nine already. is the last Damn. number there. Yeah. Let's go check job, that Andy. out. And then someone get the you're gonna get the entire Jurassic collection so far. So park one, two, three, world one and two. Oh, you're welcome, or we're sorry. You, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You could just watch the first one and just be, call it a day, or you can keep going along with us because that's what we do here at Kind of Funny in Review. We talk about movies, whether they're good or bad. It's a good time for everyone involved. And today we're talking about Jurassic Park 
three with a runtime of just one hour and 32 minutes, perfect. much shorter than just any other runtime movie, this movie. <laughs> in great, this franchise. <laughs> Released on July 18th, 2001. It was directed by Joe Johnston. Nick, do you off the top of your head know who Joe Johnston is? Actually, that of Amy I, Joe Johnston. <laughs> that'd be incredible if he was. Uh, no, I actually looked it up though, so I, it's kind of cheating, but I know that Got he it. did Captain America, right? The, the very yes. first one. So oh, he's wow. known for a lot of uh, VFX uh, stuff. In addition to uh, being a director, he did a lot of the VFX and art direction on the original Star Wars trilogy, on the original Indiana Jones trilogy. So a lot of cool stuff there. Batteries not included, oh, Greg. It. That mm. one's for mm. you. Um, he's the man that designed the Iron Giant. So oh, that's, that's wow. pretty. That's pretty damn cool. Really and cool. he also directed. A bunch of classic 90s kids movies. So oh. we got Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, yeah, The yeah. Rocketeer, oh, The yeah. Page yeah. Master, oh, Jumanji. Oh, what a movie, Page Master. Like, come on, man. This guy this guy got the stuff. I thought uh, this was, and then um, he also did Captain America 1, like Nick said. I thought this was ISO Joe. Um, real ones know out there. Real hoopers know who ISO Joe is. You need a bucket. You're real hooper, Greg? You Coach need a Kyle. bucket. You need a bucket in the worst of times. You bring in ISO Joe, Joe Johnson. Uh, he was one of those guys. He was a, kind of a, like a almost a star, Tim. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of his career, played on about 17 different NBA teams in a span of maybe three years. Um, and then when a lot of people were getting out of COVID, a lot of people were missing games because of COVID. A lot of people were getting signed to 10 day contracts. Guess who got signed? ISO Joe. ISO wow. Joe. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. You learned something here. I'm kind yeah, of facts. In review. Mm -hmm. Facts of the Furious. Mm -hmm. uh, released on July 18th, 2001. I already said that the music was done by Don Davis, adapting John Williams' score, but John Williams did not uh, supply any new arrangements really? for this. Nothing, no. Nick? <laughs> Nick, nothing? I'm sorry. No, I was writing down a note from Barrett. What, can you say that whole thing again. I'll got it for you. Don I'm, Davis. I'm Don that... Davis. <laughs> there you gotcha. go. Gotcha. Okay. There it is. You're going with it, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Andy wants. Listen, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, you, you think that want. I do this to torture Andy? He asked for it. Do you see that? <laughs> I mean, I was waiting. It's, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of like trained to like, if I know a name is going to yeah. do the thing, you're going to do the thing. Yeah. John Davis. <laughs> God, a uh, budget of $93 million and a box office of $368 million. Mm. So what did we think about Jurassic Park 3? I want to start off here. I want to set the tone because I have a feeling I don't, I don't know where we're all going to fall on this. I imagine we're all kind of on the lower end. Don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but I just want to put my thoughts out there first because I think at the end of the day, I fuck with this movie. It's not a good movie. But it's enjoyable enough, and there's enough elements of it that I'm like, I liked that. I like the the uh, pterodactyls. I really like the birdcage concept. I like Billy. He picks up I'm the guano. Happy Billy lived. You know the what? The guano. When he picks up the guano, and he's like, yeah. oh, I'm wearing a birdcage. Exactly. Exactly. There's some stuff going on. I'm like, I like this shit. However, it's surrounded by a lot of other stuff that I really, really don't like. And I think my problem with this movie is compared to Jurassic Park, it's a bad movie. Sure. Compared to the Lost World, Jurassic Park, great movie, Oscar. It's a good, it's a good movie, <laughs> Oscar movie. I would say. So I think it kind of falls into when you compare it as a whole. It's an okay movie, and I just think that it being an okay movie, it's a little closer to the bad side than the good side, and that's because it's a pretty bizarrely paced film. It's an hour and thirty minutes, but there's no antagonist, so the entire movie is just them running from dinosaurs. There is things no happening. other B-plot. There's no things happening. It's just this group going from place to place to place with dinosaurs chasing them. And that's fun, and that's cool. But it makes an hour and a half feel like two and a half hours. And I think that that is kind of the bigger problem for me is I think this movie needed a little bit more meat to mm -hmm. actually give a fuck about anything going on because the little they give us like i like the plot of the kid being lost when they find him and he's been there for a while mm -hmm. i'm a sucker for that type of stuff and i thought it was pretty well done uh but i just think that it kind of starts to feel less like a movie and more like one of those 40 adventure dinosaur rides at a theme park 
uh, mm. that just goes on for way too long. And again, it being an hour and a half, it is very short. And I commend them for doing that. I just think that it didn't even justify the runtime uh, that well. And a lot of the elements, I, I feel like this movie is a lot more nitpickable than even Lost World. Like Lost World has a lot of issues. Um, and I think it has bigger issues. Like the characters aren't acting the way that they should or whatever. This movie and that movie had the, the gymnastic scene that is weird. But this one just has a lot of those type of moments, and the CG is abundant and not great. The green screen, especially the beginning, oh is, my is atrocious. Well, Tim, uh, why does every – like every time they cut to a green screen and it's very, very obvious, why is it like – 30 times more grainy than anything else you've ever seen. And I like upon rewatching, I'm like, every time there's an obvious green screen and it's like, okay, that's fine. It's fine for it to be an obvious green screen. But why is the grain on it so much, the, the filter or whatever, so much more accentuated than in, in any other shot when there's not a green screen? That makes it more noticeable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's a bummer. But I think the biggest bummer visually is that the animatronics don't look good. Yeah. It feels like a theme park. It feels like we are seeing robots as opposed to seeing living creatures. And that's really sad. But overall, I enjoy it. And it might mainly be for the, uh, the pterodactyl stuff but um i fuck with this movie it isn't really good though nick scarpino what did you think uh i i enjoy every time i watch this movie i enjoy it. I'm, I'm kind of blown away by how much i enjoy it it's not a great movie to your point but i think it moves along at such a fast pace that you don't have time to stop and think about how am i having fun of, or not i don't yeah, know they're exactly. running to do something else right now <laughs> but but i think that's exactly what this movie needed to be like i really feel like they did th themselves a disservice by not making this i mean obviously it wasn't based on a book but not making it the sequel to jurassic park because alan grant coming back to the island is kind of what you didn't even know you wanted to see um i i enjoy all the the action moments in this i agree the green screen's terrible but i will say to counter that point i think the cg is way better in this movie than it was in any other movie as far as the dinosaurs are concerned especially compared to the last one it almost looks like the lost world was made first then jurassic park one was made second and then this one third so i i like the moments with the dinosaurs i like when they you know they break out of the, the the river moment and see all the dinosaurs for like really really see him and he's and, and billy's like listen you or not billy eric's like you know billy was right like we, this is kind of a special thing that you should be a part of um but yeah i mean it's an hour and a half so even even bad movies at an hour and a half are are pretty acceptable and this one i wouldn't say is a bad movie i think it's a fun movie i think i enjoy watching it every single time and every time i get to the end of it i'm just so glad it doesn't have that truck sequence that the, the van, the RV <laughs> sequence from the second one. I'm just so glad the like this the action pieces just move along so quickly in this one that I'm like, cool, we're in, we're out, we're done. We get attacked one more time by Velociraptors. We bow to them, we give them the eggs, and we're gone. Andy Cortez. I thought this movie is so boring. Like I just could not find much joy in it. Uh I I disagree with the van sequence. Like I'm with you, Tim. I think that van sequence is Better than anything in this movie. However, I think this movie is probably better than part two as a whole because it's not only shorter, it gets in and out. It's not like there, there's nothing incredibly offensive about much of what happens. There's a couple of, you know, really stupid moments when it comes to dialogue or uh, choices that, that that actors are making or just film choices. Like one thing that I really dislike about the CG versus animatronic in this is I think that they are wildly imbalanced where there are shots that they use animatronics and they speed up the film to maybe substitute where they didn't want to put cg and they speed up so the animatronic moves faster and it's like blatantly obvious that it's just kind of fast forwarded um and then there are there's a, a couple of decent dinosaur shots but i i finally end up watching that corridor digital uh video tim that you told us about where they recreate that uh, T-Rex scene in Jurassic Park 1 where it's raining and the, the cars had all stopped. And they pointed out the, the the best thing about that sort of sequence is that the reason why the CG looks so good is because it is very, very dark and it's one light source. And it's so much easier to make something look convincing with that. I think the Spina whatever fucking source in the beginning sequence looks awful CG-wise. Like there's terrible. fucking terrible. But then I think some of the CG shots later look like miles better to the point where it's like did two different teams work on this like what happened here exactly um i'm glad it doesn't outstay it's welcome it's a fairly short movie 
Um, that being said, like I, I still found myself pretty bored with a lot of it. And then I, I think the biggest thing, I think the biggest mistake about us watching all these movies back to back to back to back week to week <laughs> is that we totally lose any sort, at least I totally lose any sort of emotion that the God tier theme song can give you. And when they try to use it the same way in so many different <laughs> scenes, like it, we're going to do the same thing for part one. We're going to see the da, na, 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 and here's this awesome landscape. And it just it does nothing for me. I'm dead inside. Like, oh, it's just no, like Andy. this just isn't good right now. Um, And I think it may have been like maybe if I waited a year to watch this movie, it might have hit in some way in the way that like when we watch some Star Wars movies, he goes, man, that movie sucked. But the theme hit and it like gave me chills. I just felt nothing for most of this movie. I think it's pretty boring. Um, and I fucking hate the most. Like one of my all time least favorite moments in any movie is the rescue scene at the end. And I think a lot of it is because the theme song is sped up. And when suddenly it's like, you shouldn't do that. Don't call to us. And then, oh, the whole fucking army Navy here. <laughs> I don't know what the thought process was behind that choice, but it fucking sucks so bad. Anyway, yeah, I think this movie's kind of shitty. Greg Miller. The thing about Jurassic Park 3 is I think we're all on the same wavelength, even if you think it's you, Tim fucks with it, but Andy thinks it's terrible or whatever. Jurassic Park 3, if it, and Nick, you might be the only person on the podcast that's there with me, mm -hmm. but Jurassic Park 3 is close your eyes. Mm -hmm. It's Saturday. And you turn on USA Network at yeah. 345. Yeah. This oh, is the oh, film you're going to find. Yeah. And you're not going to watch it, but you're going to read a magazine to it. You're going to mm -hmm. do laundry. You're going to talk to your fa your friends and do a board game. It's it's noise you put on. And that sucks, of course. It's not, the, this entire in review, if there's nothing to take away from it, and I mean as Jurassic Park in review, the entire series, if there's nothing to take away from it, it is how impactful how much of a masterpiece jurassic park one was that that movie could be that movie and spawn all these sequels that we don't really give a fuck about but it was still it gives pangs of that original thing you care so much about and that's what this movie does as well like uh, you know one of the big things we had for jurassic park 2 was how much ian malcolm didn't work as the main character dr grant works as the main character Right, and I think it's a, a great way they they put him up there uh, with uh, Ellie. Right, uh, the, uh, I forgot her name. Right now, yeah, Ellie. Uh, Ellie. Like we get, we, you get that question answered that they're not together, but they're still friends. That's cool. I like that. That's great. You know, we see him still out on dig sites. All right, great. And it's like you get him there, and it's all. This, but as you said earlier, Tim, there's no antagonist. This movie is just a bunch of stuff that happens, and so it's seeing Doctor Grant in these what should be fun, cool situations, but then they're just not that cool, whether it be the CG, whether it be the fact that they just stumble into them, whether it be anything. It's awful to the fact of like, you know, to start with him and Ellie in the beginning again, you're like, that's great. But then it also, I think, you know, they're still, the chemistry they still have and also the nostalgia we have for that relationship then reverberates through every other relationship in the movie where, you know, you can sit there and be like, you're glad Billy survived. I'm, I don't give a shit that Billy survived, whatever. But it's more the fact that like, I don't buy for a second that Dr. Grant and Billy would be friends or coworkers. There's no chemistry between them. In the same way that William H. Macy, Taya Leone, fantastic actors. And honestly, some parts of this, well, I think they don't give much for Taya Leone, and I think they do her dirty in this movie. But William H. Macy is being William H. Macy in this movie, and especially when he's the, it gets revealed that he's like the plumbing guy instead of like a millionaire or whatever, right? But back to them, there's no chemistry between them. Like, I don't believe that. Not only do I not believe you were ever married or and not, not only do I believe you were kindling mm -hmm. your love. I don't even believe you're in a bad divorce right now. You know what I mean? It's just like you're William H. Macy and Taylor Leone working on this USA movie as we go through it or whatever. And all this stuff happens and then it's over. And you're like, all right, it was over. And it's, you know, one of those movies that I feel is such a creative writing exercise I would have done in eighth grade, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you just write, 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 and then the Navy and Army come to save them, period. Why? Because Ellie did it. But, like, weren't we just talking about how the government wouldn't help? Like, what the who, – who did she call? What had happened? I don't, I don't need 30 minutes of exposition in phone trees. It's just, like, an unbelievable ending. It's water under the bridge, Greg. I'm glad it's over at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're happy it's over. And, again, it's just, like, it's such a – 
a USA movie, it's such a comic book tie into something. You know what I mean? Just yeah. a side story to the Jurassic Park legacy of like, you wonder what happened to Dr. Grant. We'll pick up this comic book or this novelization. You're like, all right. Yeah. Like he went there and they got off the island. Cool. All right. You know what I mean? Nobody of the importance, the main cast dies. Like, of course, the mercenaries that get hired that, you know, look and act and just like the mercenaries in the last movie and they get it. You're like, oh, who gives a shit about them or whatever? But it's interesting because there's there's minor tweaks that they did. Like the mercenaries they hired are like budget mercenaries because even Udesky is like, she, he's like, so you're a mercenary too? He goes, not really. Like the guy that, that I, I wanted to get for this, like just called in sick or whatever, like didn't yeah. want to do the job. So I stepped in. So like, I love that there's minor tweaks where like he, he, he didn't really have the budget for real mercs. So we got these kind of budget guys. And I, and one of the things I do love is that they just immediately die. Like the two guys that you think are going to be actually, you know, kill a dinosaur or whatever. Sure. Like we've seen before, like, you know, the badass Pete Pasta weight or the guy, you know, Muldo Mulroy Muldoon, whatever the guy from the first movie, Muldoon. we don't, Thank you, Andy. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> gotcha. we don't see that here. Instead, we see we see the guy who's like, you know, I like the line where he's like, "Listen, if we split up, I'm going with I'm going with them. Just to, you know, I'm going with you guys." I wish he didn't die, so, Nick. Know. But dude, but he that, died. But, in a very but that is an all time moment. That is like that is a real moment, a cool moment in this movie that I can point to and say I actually genuinely love this sequence of like, oh, they're it's bait. They they're set up baiting bait. him, yeah, yeah. Which is I, I like so that part. Sick. You know, I, I like I like moments in this too. Like I, I I like that there's a moment where he's like, "Wait a minute, w what was that? What was that dinosaur? I've never that wasn't on Ingen's list." And he goes, "Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here that that was not on their list. It's very fascinating. They don't really explore that." And then I, you know, I know that I'm the one that hopefully we can set up a sequel. <laughs> well, that's probably what they were trying to do, uh, unfortunately. Um, but then you know, and I actually like I'm shocked to say every time I come back to this, I don't hate the kid. I'm actually kind of fascinated as to how this kid could have survived on this island for eight weeks. And Ooh. I think that's more of an interesting story than anything else that's happening in here. And unfortunately, you don't find it don't... entirely unbelievable, though. I do that find for it eight unbelievable. Weeks the kid made it. Like, yeah, I, I would have rather the movie be centered on him and, like, yeah, like it's kind of like the hatchet or whatever, right? It's yeah. like this young adult thing of this kid making it work. But instead, he's just there and he's like, on, just happens to be on the last of everything. And then, yeah, he's like, dickweed mom's boyfriend or whatever that got turned into a skeleton in eight weeks and all this shit like all right well yeah and that's what i'm saying I'm like i'm i'm I, I that part could have been very cringy it could have been very much uh like other you know disney properties that have children in them but um but it didn't i was like oh this is kind of cool i kind of want to see where this goes and then it just, we just move on like i was like i always thought every time i watched this I'm like why did they not bring at some point they're going to splash these pterodactyls with T-Rex piss and they never do. It never comes back. Right. He never uses that, even though he makes a big deal. But he's like, oh, it was pretty hard to get. I'm like, what, you have to fucking milk that thing. What, what, how hard is it? You saw it pee. You ran over there. You got it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, I think they kind of saw I think the director kind of saw the second one and was like, this is long and nobody gives a shit about this. Kind of looked at what the materials he had and was like, at least we can make this short. At least we can make this short. And with that. You know what? Let me tell you about the sponsors. Oh, this episode is brought to you by Credit Karma. Are you earning credit card rewards? Credit Karma can help you compare your reward options so you can find a card that fits your lifestyle, helping you earn miles or cash back for spending you're going to do anyway. I've been using Credit Karma for years. It's such an easy way to just keep track of my credit score and make sure that everything is going fantastically with so many great features. Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your financial situation. Credit Karma partners with a wide range of card issues were so you can be sure that you're exploring all sorts of options comparing cards on credit karma is 100 percent free and it won't affect your credit score and best of all credit karma uses your credit data to show you your chances of approval before you even apply helping you apply with more confidence that is an awesome feature credit karma create your own karma ready to find the card for you head to credit karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today go to creditkarma.com or the credit karma app to find the card for you that's creditkarma.com and, and now andy hit the song please welcome to Jurassic Plot. Jurassic Park 3. Return to Isla Sorna. 
Hold on to your butts. Dinosaurs are back, Greg. Ilosaur in a restricted, dangerous, mysterious, sexy, like Maine. <laughs> a boat like of Paris. Maine. <laughs> <laughs> a boat of parasailers take his uh I, what i thought was a dad and son but it turns out it's just some fucking deadbeat boyfriend of uh of amanda uh out for some you know they want to see some bad green screen and isla sorna and the music here kind of sounds like indiana jones so i dig it i'm intrigued dad and son head high into the air what could possibly go wrong the boat hits fog and starts skipping waves a sudden tug on the line below alerts them to the fact that there's trouble brewing when they clear the fog they look down and the boat is just bloody and no one's there and it's headed toward a rock so deadbeat boyfriend cuts them loose and off they go to isla sorna's jungle fun sequence here terrible green screen just the kind of green screen that really takes you out of the movie here it takes you out and it sucks because i do think this is a cool ass setup this is the first movie that me and my brother ever saw in theaters without adults like we went by ourselves to go see this thing and i remember seeing this and like i wasn't taken out of the scene because i was a dumb kid and green screen didn't mean shit to me uh but re-watching it now i'm like fuck i remember this being the coolest thing ever because when they they're hang gliding and just the idea of them doing the tours the dangerous tours around the island to see the dinosaurs maybe like that's pretty cool and they go into this like the the fog and then when they go over and the people are dead in the boat it's like this is awesome but now watching it it's like the awesomeness is so subdued when it just looks so dumb and you start asking a lot of questions about the characters what's going on i I don't know but we also i wonder what do you think it was the pterodactyls that killed them yeah i think that's what they were flying super low yeah 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 now they're surfing they had little surfboards (laughs) sick the little compies were just surfboarding the ripping the (laughs) ripping the tide Uh, just so everyone knows, because there's going to be one person who puts the comments here, and it's probably going to be Kevin when he rewatches this, of course, because he watches everything he's not in. These aren't pterodactyls. They're ter- pterodons. So oh. I'm just going to call them pterodactyls for the rest of the time. Yeah, because that's stupid. They're pterodactyls. They're technically. Calm, calm Donnie. Ter- Donnie. Donnie Osborne's. Do- Ter- Donnie, pterodon. the pterodon file halt. No, no. And no. then there's the Spinosaurus. And then there's the Velociraptor. And I, Tim, I know you were wondering, like, what was the dinosaur that had the spike that looked a little mm-hmm. like Darth Maul? Uh, that was the Ceratosaurus. Great. Mm-hmm. What a bad so, uh, so I have all the real names this time, guys, because I know everyone really cares. Anyway, yeah. back to the plot. Alan, we catch up with him over when he's at Ellie's house. Uh, he's catching Ellie up on the raptor research, and somehow they're even scarier now that we know that they can talk to each other and they're smarter than dolphins and, and whales and Greg. Uh, they say the goodbyes, and Ellie tells him he's the best. And it's kind of sad, actually, because you're like, wow, they could have been something. But Alan's just so shut off from his He didn't emotions. want kids, remember? He, he doesn't want kids. Ass, she's got two kids. Honestly. She's a book writer. I appreciate this already so much more than the second movie. Like Greg was saying about Jeff Goldblum's character didn't feel consistent with who he was in the first movie. This immediately where he's talking to the kid and he's like, no, those guys wouldn't fight each other. They're they're herbivores, whatever. My that's Alan Grant. Like you already got this character set off on the right foot. Now, how easy it is to get him back on the island. That's a whole other fucking thing. No, that's going to happen. He wasn't going back on the island, right? Like, I mean. He was going yeah. over the island. That's a different story. It's true. true. I never want to go to Kansas again, but I'll fly over it. Look down at this crater full of horrible people just sitting there in their own shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things, Greg, where you kind of, remember the old wise tale where like the the planes would just they would take all the shit and they would flush it out, and then shit rocks would just land on things. Yeah, and you kind of wonder. <laughs> Do they wait until they fly over Kansas? Yeah, anyway, no, definitely. those rocks landed. Those people made homes out of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, get from the heaven. This is the man I've heard about. It's just Dan Riker chomping on his shit rock. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's just a solid 100,000 subscribers in Kansas that are like, nope, not going to subscribe this day. As you know, the <laughs> internet and electricity aren't there, so you have to worry about it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, let's see. Dr. Grant gives a speech. We cut back over to him uh, giving a speech to get some funding about raptors and claims that raptors would become the dominant species on this planet were it not for the pesky meteorite. But no one gives a shit. All they want to hear about is Jurassic Park. I love this. I love that he's like, does anyone have any questions? And everyone raises <laughs> their hands. And he's like... Does anyone have any questions not about what happened in Jurassic Park or the things that happened in, in San, San Diego, Diego that I was not a part of? I was not of. a part of. Yeah, <laughs> which is hilarious. A little dig toward, uh, toward the last book. Uh, everyone, of course, lowers their hands except for one dude. He asks about Isla Sorna and the very real dinosaurs there. But Dr. Grant rebuffs him. He says, no force on Earth, heaven, Earth or heaven could get me to that island. But, of course, uh, we cut over and there's a team prepping to do just that. That is Nash, uh, Udesky, and I forget the other guy's name. Uh, but I love that the other guy. That's what you said. 
Yeah, I, oh God, Nash. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll, I'll figure uh, it out. Real quick, do we do we think that there will ever be another Jurassic Park that is as fun and full of substance as Part One? No. Or is it that Part One is like you can't really you can't really retread those stories because that was not only scary dinosaur stuff and there's like obviously there's cool action sequences, but like the philosophy be behind evolution and corporate greed and stuff like that. Like it, it's, you can't really rehash those stories, right? In, in a way well, that they, would. They certainly tried to in the second one. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I don't know. It's, I just it's don't know magic. if we'll ever. Like, I well, think no, the, I mean, the, the thing that really kind of like made Jurassic Park more than just dinosaurs, like we keep seeing is that like, it was the first time we believed dinosaurs were real right and it's like because of the vfx pushing the boundaries like defining what animatronics can do and cg could do and all this stuff like i think that that was added on top of incredible direction and uh and a story with themes and ideas yeah. and characters that opposed each other and like, mm -hmm. it all there was this constant battle of like man versus uh nature and all that like it was yeah. about something and i just think that all of that kind of combined to be amazing and have spectacle whereas the rest of these are just kind of like double down on spectacle double down on spectacle blockbuster yeah. blockbuster make a blockbuster I mean, yeah. movie make it the dinosaurs yeah. bigger do the dinosaur thing it's one of the things we talked about it, with when we talked about the first jurassic park and i i mentioned it, i was like i love the first the, the first half of jurassic park more than i like the running away from the dinosaurs and the sort of survival horror aspect of it because yeah, there is that philosophy like i love it's it's weirdly shot but i like the dinner scene where they're talking about you never stop to think if you should, you know, that's, that's basically the crux of that movie for me. But also a lot of it is really, let's, let's kind of call it what it is. It's, it's sort of a gimmick that once you've seen it, it's run its course in one movie. So every time you reproduce that, you're just like, ah, this is just a cheap facsimile of the original one. Um, and it's very difficult to find an original hook for it. But I digress. We cut back over to Fort Peck Lake, Montana. Billy teaches another paleontologist the difference between rough and smooth. And it is... All that Stacked it is, Doctor Doctor Grant arrives with bad news. They're out of funding in four weeks, and Billy's like, "No, nah, I had to buy some fucking skittles." He's like, "We only have three weeks now." Uh, Billy shows him a three D printer uh, that can print dino bones uh, that they've scanned into the computer, and his latest work is the resonating chamber of a Velociraptor. Keep that in your back pocket; it's going to come back in the third act. <laughs> was Randy Was Randy Newman playing in the background of this? It scene? sounded like it, didn't it? I wasn't okay, sure if good, it was. But it definitely sounded like it. <laughs> Uh, Paul Kirby, played by William H. Macy, shows up with the deal of a lifetime. They head to dinner and we meet Mrs. Kirby, played by T. Leone. Uh, he wants Grant to be his guy. He's like, we've done Kilimanjaro and Everest and all these places. And now we want to fly over Isla Sorna. Uh, and he's like, listen, I don't want to do that. He's like, we're just flying over. We're not landing. And I'll make a generous donation to your cause and keep you funded for the next 10 years or whatever. What's that old saying about if it's too good to be true? You should probably do it. Off we go into the <laughs> wild blue yonder. Billy tells Alan uh, about his lucky camera strap and you're like that's gonna come back into play uh billy introduced himself to i think the actor is wayne grow from heat but i didn't bother looking it up uh while alan <laughs> takes a nap and dreams about talking raptors and man alan. i thought y'all were kidding about this i was like that's not a part of the movie alan alan, alan. we're here <laughs> alan alan <laughs> see it's it's funny because like it's so stupid and it, the it thing for me is it's so quick that it like really doesn't matter and it's not as dumb as like the gymnastics thing oh but what bothers what bothers me is like the reason they did it is they were trying to back up the very little that this movie actually like was trying to add that was new which was essentially the raptors can communicate and they are talking to each other and so this was like a very literal showing of that and i was like i don't know that we needed it and it's goofy I thought I am. Yes, Andy Cortez. I'm sorry, Nick, you go first because you're going to make a point about this and I was not. I was going to say this does not bother me. I thought the fact that it's a dream, the fact that he's dreaming about these raptors who were like the source of his nightmare, but also his intrigue, I think kind of worked for me, right? Like there's a moment later in this where he he stops, even though it's terrifying, and like has this revelation about... He's like, oh my god! Like they're they're searching for something. They're talking to each other. All that stuff. So I think I, I like that Grant that Alan Grant is conflicted. I like that he's conflicted about knowing the dangers of this island, but also being fascinated by the research opportunities that he can get. And we see that sort of mirrored in Billy, who is like the younger, like more slick astronaut version of himself. They even talk about that later, where he's like, there's two different kinds of people. There's people that want to be astronomers or, or not astronomers, uh, astronomers, and there's people that want to be astronauts. And Billy's the astronaut. So this kind of I think is kind of works in that regard but it is goofy as shit 
Um, I wanted to bring up something that I slacked to you the day after we did Jurassic Park 1. Um, it was a comment from Luke Kunka. Kunka. So just pretend this is from Jurassic Park 1. Okay. And Greg and Nick, you will greatly appreciate this. Sure. On the helicopter ride to the island the first time, Grant only has two female ends of each seat buckle. How he solves the problem is tying them together, ultimately finding a way. Wow. There you go. Is that not the coolest well. thing of all time? Don't roll your eyes, Greg. Don't roll your eyes. It's cool. That's good foreshadowing. That's really good foreshadowing. I just uh, want to read into this movie about dino DNA. All right, come on. Cool. That's God, great. God, totally off purpose. Why else would they have that seed? So fucking weird. <laughs> come on, guys. Uh, we Nash and Udesky get a message from the Costa Rican authorities telling them to turn back and they ignore it. That's our that's our Hold second on. sign that something bad's happening. I need to stop you there, Nick. I, I, I wanted to look into it. I wanted to confirm it's even better than I could have imagined. When Dr. Grant and Billy enter the bar to meet with the Kirbys, the song Big Hat No Cattle by Randy Newman is playing. This is <laughs> not a mere coincidence. The song is about lying and making yourself out to be someone who you are not. Oh God, exactly man. what the Kirbys are doing. Wow. Oh, Randy Great. Newman, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's layers of this. Like a they're making ending. Citizen Kane over here on the set of Jurassic <laughs> Park Three. That's some Edgar Wright type yeah. shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they do, they decide to ignore that. They fly low, and we get our first glimpse of the dinos with the theme. Uh, and I'm still a sucker for this name. I know Andy's dead inside, but to me, I'm like, put a dinosaur in this theme on, and I'm I'm, I'm at least giddy like a kid for a couple seconds. Uh, Andy, I, I get where Andy's coming from, and I I kind of do feel it to an extent. But when we get Alan Grant saying, "My God, I've forgotten." I'm like, okay, you want to be back. That, that was dope. That was, shit, dope. that was dope. That was dope. No, I, I think the part that I was bringing up most that I think is supposed to hit that just didn't for me is near the end when he's like, Dr. Grant, I think Billy was right about wanting to kind of be here with these dinosaurs. And I the theme hits it, there. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, that that moment did not hit for me. And I think oh, I love that moment. That's the one I'm talking about where they come out of like the darkness of the river. And he's like, I think he was right. And you look over and it's just all of the dinosaurs there. I, that that part worked better for me than anything, any of those moments in number two, especially since the dinosaurs look like somebody drew them on the celluloid. <laughs> uh, Alan tries to play a tour guide, but it becomes very apparent that the team there is looking for more than dinosaurs when they attempt to land. Alan protests and gets knocked out for his trouble. Uh, when he comes to, the plane is parked on a landing strip. Uh, and over outside, Amanda keeps shouting for her kid, and Alan tells her, listen, that's a bad idea. You got to stop doing that, as Nash and Udesky had already run off into the jungle and immediately come running back, and I love this. There's not even a moment that we're, that Alan Grant gets to breathe before the two badasses come running out of the like yeah. uh, out of the jungle, being like, this is a bad idea. We need to immediately get plane, leave this island, get back on the plane. Back on the plane. Uh, of course, as they do, uh, they get back on the plane, and they try to take off. Um, and uh, who is a Cooper tries to flag them down as he comes out of the jungle with a bloody arm. And he's just like, this guy crushes this part because yeah. he's this badass sitting in the back with the glasses right the entire time. And the next second we see him, he's crying, begging the plane to stop because whatever he just saw was so terrifying. And of course, that thing was the Spinosaurus <gasps> bigger than a T-Rex. They make a point to say that. So when it kills the T-Rex later, you know, yeah, when it roars, Alan Grant says, no, it sounds bigger. <laughs> That's Come on. bigger. <laughs> How do Come you know? On. Cause he, <laughs> Come they on, really Andy. dropped the ball with this shit. Cause it's like, I, I know that it always has to be just bigger and better and bigger and better, but it's like, I, they really didn't do a good job of explaining it in a way that I feel like was impactful and mattered. And I know they did explain it. I just don't think that it was earned. And I didn't ever really feel tension between the Spinosaurus and the T-Rex. Like, yeah, sure, they fought. Yeah, sure, he's bigger. Broke his fucking neck like, in two seconds, remember? Show, showed who the real king of the dinosaur jungle is. Yeah. Yeah, even, even Jurassic World, the next one, does – a better job of saying why this dinosaur is bigger and better because it's well no feature spoilers we won't talk about that. but like they still do a better job than that here of uh, i guess it's never felt like more of a threat than the t-rex ever was like i guess it's still yeah, a I big guess, ass dinosaur that's trying to kill us you know i guess my thing is this movie this movie didn't need a bigger dinosaur like it, that wasn't part of really the plot at all. It could have just been T-Rexes and it could have been just more T-Rexes and we would have been fine with it. But it's like, it wasn't like there was a theme being backed up of like, oh, nature's evolving and all that shit. Like, yeah, that was happening, but like it didn't need to in this movie. Uh, agreed. Uh, anyway, this thing takes down the plane. The fuselage lodge comes crashing into the jungle uh, floor that we think, but it's actually in a tree and the spino. Oh, sorry. 
you know, the front end, <laughs> they smash the tree. Uh, they think it's okay. The Spinosaurus comes up and rips the front end off and then eats Nash, uh, who has the yeah. sat foam, by the way, important to notice. Then the fuselage comes crashing down to the jungle floor and Spino rolls around a thousand times. Mrs. Kirby tries to bolt, but Alan grabs her, drags her back into safety uh, while Spino is busy trying to open up the plane like a, like a payday bar. Alan and the team bolts into the jungle and come across a dead carcass, or so they think, because the thing that has killed it is still eating it. I like this shot. It's a stinky yeah. looking, bloody red carcass. And then up from it comes the T-Rex. He's like, what? <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit. T-Rex chases after him. Of course, Spino to the rescue. And he looks up. The T-Rex lo- goes, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> he's like this. Peter. Um, <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is where this movie really – I was about to put this above Jurassic Park 1. But I can't sit here, Greg, in good conscience and abide this fucking revisionist bullshit. There we go. The T-Rex is the king of the dinosaurs. There's nothing that can take this fucking thing down. I was in theaters. I was like, oh, cool. The T-Rex is here. It's going to kill this stupid-looking Spinosaurus. And no, the Spinosaurus just snaps his neck. And I guess he's the big baddie now. And I just don't like that at all. Anyway. Uh, let's see, Grant punches Kirby in the face because he wants the truth, and Kirby finally comes clean about the real reason they're there. They're looking for their son who went missing with Amanda's special friend. Uh, Grant and Billy tell them to stuff it. They head back to the plane to gather what they can and hike. Their plan is to hike out of the jungle to the coast while Paul and Amanda have been split up for a while, but they still kind of clearly have feelings for each other. We get a couple tender moments there, but to, to Greg's earlier point, it doesn't really work. Uh, Alan tells Billy the big dino they encounter was a Spinosaurus, which is not on InGen's list. Billy spots Kirby. Uh, not knowing his ass from a hole in the ground, and Kirby comes clean. He's, he's like, "Listen, man." He's like, "Did you count? Uh, did you climb? Would you, do you uh, when you did Everest? Did you base camp at twenty five thousand feet or thirty? He goes, oh, 30. He goes, cool. That's about a thousand feet over this the summit of Everest. Fucking idiot! You don't know what the hell you're doing, bro. Check out your lies. Because uh, I could have <laughs> told you that. You could have fucking Googled this guy, by the way. Like the internet know, yeah, what right? existed back then, right? And they're like, oh, let me guess. That check's not going to clear. I'm like, you didn't fucking cash the check. <laughs> you didn't wait for the funds to clear before. Like, yeah, I'll fly on this plane. Let's go. Yeah, he's like, I work for Kirby. What? Roofs? Or what does he do? It's plumbing. And, paint. And yeah, more. plumbing. And he's like, hey, we yeah, also yeah. could do bathrooms or something like that. Fraud. Uh, also, it turns out that Udesky isn't a merc either. He's more of an agent. He's like, I just kind of fill him in. Uh, they come across the torn parasail uh, from the kid, and Udesky finds the camera. And I like this part because he finds oh. the camera, and she goes, the battery's dead. He goes, all right, let me let me figure something out. And it take, starts taking the battery out of a light. And I'm like, it's dumb. It wouldn't work. But the videographer in me was like, there's no fucking way those lithium-ion batteries in that camera would have lasted eight weeks without, without draining completely dead. And they knew that. They were like, young Nick's out there watching. He's going to be a video professional one yeah. of these days. Watch out. He's somewhere so out there. So let's have a one, just a throwaway line where this guy's like, I'll take some fucking double-A batteries out of this flashlight and make this work. Don't nod your head. Or d- shake your head there, Tim. This is good writing, okay? Uh, yeah. This That's is how you write writing. yourself out of a okay. problem. Uh, <laughs> Tim, you don't uh-huh. know what you're not in your head at. This <laughs> oh, guy man. knows, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, uh, they watch the footage and we see the whole encounter uh, unfold once again. Eric, it turns out, is still alive, but her special friend is dead as disco and looks like one of the skeletons from Indiana Jones, the beginning. Yo, can you um, imagine being this woman or or uh the the dad too but being this woman where you're like i am literally watching footage where my new husband Boyfriend. yeah and my son are probably going to be ripped apart by dinosaurs and yes. she's just like let's just fucking watch it i, I mean also what you, you have to do? know I get it you i know. get it but still like that sucks for her pretty right. damn bad i this sequence is so funny to me because it screams of a sequence that a, a a team of college students would put together for their film project and this is their big special effects moment right that they happen to put together like a like dead Blair body Witch. corpse mm-hmm. they they folk man they acted like this was the best thing this movie had to offer like they leaned into this shot that <laughs> that skeleton got more screen time than almost fucking alan grant like <laughs> god damn it was on there for a long time like guys like it's Quit cutting back to it. <laughs> like we know Taylor, it. they let Taylor only scream way too long. <laughs> yeah, like we know way what it is, long. but but also we're smart enough to know. Oh, the parachute—that's who that is. Like I don't know. It's like they kept on cutting back to it because maybe people didn't understand. Maybe test audiences didn't know that that was uh, that the you know the the parachute wasn't a dead giveaway. You know. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, of course, Amanda sees that the, the dead body screams, runs off. Paul runs after her. They have a tender moment, which is interrupted when Amanda spots something. Uh, Billy rolls up the parasol while Grant and Udesky go to investigate. They spot a bunch of nests. Well, first one nest of raptor eggs, and then the camera pans back. We see a bunch of nests of raptor eggs. Man, these raptors have been getting it on. Uh, they go back, and Billy has disappeared only to reappear a second later. When Alan asked him what he was doing, he was like, I was phot- photographing the nests. Yeah, was that's I? the ticket. Yeah, you know, like you're, I don't, like, I don't even know you. I don't trust you, Billy. Yeah, uh, not even because you're the brother in Face Off that was bad, but I know you. Know? Oh, he was the brother in Face Off. He's gonna get you. Didn't he say something? He like was. That? Yeah. yeah. Face Off Two is that what you said? The sequel? No, Face no, Off. Face the first off. one. Remember, he's, he's Castor, the one in, in prison. Brother. Castor Troy's brother. He goes to. Oh, I'm Castor Troy. Remember that? Everyone should go see That's the, the, the massive talent thing. That <laughs> he's also face. in the, the the Sopranos movie. The, uh, oh, is many he, stakes is he, newer. Many yeah, I never watched newer? it. It got, it got a bad review. I thought. Well, I enjoyed it, it. Well, I did, but I didn't have an affinity for The Sopranos beforehand, so I can't tell. They well, made a Face Off two in 2016. We're not talking about Face Off two unless it's going to be Face Off two in review. Also, got a nine out here, of ten. I would like to say that we should have the cro- the Jurassic Park movies crossover with Tremors at some point, but that's something I'll have to talk to the Universal people about. It's an, an easy. That's an easy ask right there, guy. We can get that done. Tremors, great film. Uh, they spot a derelict structure and they head in. A lot of derelict structures on this island, by the way. Just right when you need them. Right when you need them, <laughs> yeah. they're right there. I, I will say, though, I like them. Like, I think that all of the structures in this movie are the only thing that really make it an actual movie. Like, I feel like the set pieces are well designed. They're interesting. And I like that they make sense in the world with this being the second island, this not being the Jurassic Park island. It's just kind of meant to raise these dinosaurs before they get sent over to the other one. I think the set design backs that up really well. And uh, I made a note here when they get into this place. where it's like, this is it's pretty cool looking. And it looks like a movie set as opposed to just we're in a jungle again yeah i agree the only, i mean obviously we touched upon this but the downside with that is everything's just very convenient right they do nothing to actually figure out where this parasail is they just happen to like everything they need is just in a straight line in whatever direction they're walking and that's just kind of that gets kind of weird and boring and kind of coincidental after a while andy did you have a question you raised your hand did i oh when andy yeah. starts drifting his hand just starts going up did i because <laughs> he's lighter than air Anyway, uh, Amanda, <laughs> they go in and they, and, and I like this part. Amanda spots a phone. And she's like, what the hell? Tries it. It's dead. Uh, as they move away, of course, something in the background outside runs past. And like, oh, ooh, you're being hunted. Billy smashes a vending machine. Well, Paul tries first off. He's like, does anyone have any change? And Billy's like, what are you fucking stupid? And just smashes through the vending machine uh, and takes some payday bars. And then Paul tries to do it, and he just sprains his ankle. Uh, deeper in, they discover the remnants of a dino cloning lab. I like the music here. It's super creepy. It reminds me kind of a poltergeist. Uh, and then yeah. we get what I think is a cool shot in this movie where Amanda looks over, and she spots what you think is like a severed raptor's head. And then the eye moves, and you're like, oh, shit. It's a raptor. It's in there. It got inside, and it was just waiting there. Still, I thought I thought she was uh, hallucinating. Maybe. Well, what, what, what now, and Andy? Let's play this out. Everyone, close your eyes, because Tim's gone. So now we can actually have some fucking fun. Yeah. on this podcast. Shut my eyes. Andy, I'm Amanda. I'm walking over to the the tank, and I look up and I see the Velociraptor, and it's still and it's just standing still. And then its mouth opens. What does it say? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow. 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 Oh, I didn't really see that good. either. Cool, cool. No. Good. <laughs> it was really good, and then it got like very. very yeah, you sexual. started doing this. You started doing the sprinkle hands things, and I don't think it's okay. We're getting a little bit more of a the grapefruit technique there. Yeah, oh, the glug of, glug, the glug. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, this this kicks off an action sequence where we go run into the cages. They get stuck in the cage, and then the the raptor looks up and it's like, oh, I'm smarter than you. I can just climb this cage as it starts to. I hate that. They I reverse the that, cage the and way. pin it in. You don't like that part? I thought it was it's so funny. I just fucking hate that. Like, it's it, like I'm I'm learning. Ooh, there's a hole up there. Like it's it's just like we get it. Yeah, like <laughs> it's so weird. 
uh let's see there uh, alan hears the the as as the thing is stuck alan hears it screaming for reinforcement and his reinforcements and is simultaneously terrified and impressed the other raptors heed the call as alan and the team run into a stampeding herd uh billy uh falls and runs back to grab his bag and you're like okay something important's in that bag or else he wouldn't risk life and limb for it uh udeski gets separated from the group and then gets his back shredded by one of the raptors mm. i like i think this whole scene is great it's Incredible. really sad and terrifying, but they like you're like they didn't kill him. What are they doing? They're just wounding him, uh, similar to how you would in warfare. Uh, Amanda rushes to he's save like him. He's like the and- one character that made me laugh. In in uh, on that front, while we're here and we're talking about Udeski, aka Michael Jeter, Nick, do you remember him in the TV Derek show Jeter's Evening brother. Shade? Did you ever watch Evening Shade? Was Evening that a show Shade. you grew up with? No, the only thing I really know this guy. My only touchstone for this guy. Okay, yeah, this is kind of looking familiar. Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Um, my only touchstone for this actor is he was the really kind of nerdy tech guy in a movie called Drop Zone starring okay. Wesley Snipes that was about skydivers. Somebody was like, you know that skydiving sequence in Point Break? Everyone loved that. Let's make a whole movie about that starring Wesley Was Snipes. it by Paramount? It, you mean the, the movie? Drop I Zone? I mean, I'm sure maybe. I'll look it up right now. Because uh, so Great America, which is a theme park around here, used to be Paramount's Great America. And all mm-hmm. the themes were after Paramount stuff and there was like a Top Gun roller coaster which yeah, was sick Paramount. as fuck and there was the, the tower like the drop tower ride was Drop Zone I didn't know it was based on a movie that makes it, it way fucking cooler yeah. oh he was in the Green Mile that's why I remember him that's right sure sure but more importantly Evening Shade sure, Evening was a Shade. TV show with Burt Reynolds that I watched a lot and I remember enjoying a lot and I can't tell you a fucking thing about Evening Shade anymore except I'm looking at like the the Evening Shade season one, I guess, DVD box set right here. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember the characters, I remember their faces, but like, I can't, like, the right here it says, a former pro football player moves back to his childhood hometown. Like, I didn't know that was what this was about. You know, I need to watch Evening Shade again. Evening Great, Shade definitely sounds like it would be at 7 p.m. on USA Network after Lost World showed. Sure. Like, that sounds like a sort of Silk Stockings type show. Totally. Evening wow. Shade. It's not sexy. It was not sexy. No, no, it was, no, it was no. a it's family ABC really? show. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wrong. Well, Greg, if it's, any, if it's any consolation, Greg, uh, you can watch every season of Night Court on Amazon Prime right now, free with that. Yeah, God damn it. That was a bitch. <laughs> beep, beep. Oh, that really that just that just awoke something in my brain that was uh savage dude I night court fucking rock bow, andy bow, and i don't bow, want your bow. shit that you've never heard of it you don't know who harry s anderson I don't. is fuck <laughs> off nobody wants andy nobody wants the bit right now nobody wants the yeah. bit character Come clean, andy, andy. Come that doesn't know clean. what fucking night court is you kidding me right what i wanted was this court to do something about that sound <laughs> that sound is gonna activate people out there like winter soldier <laughs> oh it sure did it activated me <laughs> uh, back to the plot. Uh, Amanda tries to save Udeski, but uh, but trips and falls upside down. And of course, the Raptors come to pounce on her. It was a trap. They wounded Udeski, so the others would come to help, and they could kill everyone. Uh, Alan watches two Raptors talk and wants to know what they're looking for. Then another Raptor snaps Udeski. He like realizes, eh, and the jigs up, and so he. Uh, snaps Udeski's neck and it's savage uh alan then gets surrounded by raptors but someone pops some smoke as a diversion and runs in to save him enter eric the the survivor full-on ghillie suit takes alan back to uh newt's lair from aliens which he uh which he has he has formed and out of a broken down water truck andy i was gonna say the better plan would have been for the raptors like as they're using him on the ground as bait like are you okay and you just hear like alan and they're like, oh, my yeah. God, he's yeah. calling out to us. The guy's calling out to us. But no, it was the Raptors the whole time. It was that would be incredible. They could just talk and they could play chess. Yeah. Alan. Uh, Alan. Alan tells, his, uh, he tells him that his parents are here uh, together, uh, which the kid replies, that's not good. They don't do so well together. Uh, he's like, you'd be surprised what people can do when they have to. Eric recognizes, like, hey, you're Dr. Grant. He's like, I read both your books. The first one was better which I thought was a nice little well, you nod. you hated dinosaurs, which is fun. See, here's the thing is I, I like the character of the kid. I don't like the performance. Really, I thought I thought he I did a serviceable job mm-hmm. with given the material, but I like. I, the really, I really like him, and I was talking about the set pieces. Like, I love that his little hideout is like a truck that's like overturned into the the river, and like mm-hmm. he's just like hiding out in it. Like, I thought that shit was really cool. He was from uh, a Disney Channel original movie, right? I believe. Was he? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the little kid. Yeah, 
maybe a Nickelodeon movie, maybe just a young kids movie, but he was definitely like a child actor sort of thing. Well, Andy, if you uh, I'm on while, it. I, while I continue the, the plot, if you want Andy's to look up the theme to Night Court, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> Andy, right, they talk about the books. I like this, is, of course, is a, a little dig at the first two books that they wrote. He's like, I like the first book better, which I don't know if you guys picked up on that or not, but it was definitely a fuck you to Michael Crichton. Eric has been very resourceful. He's mined the island for all of InGen's tech and resources, and bet things are starting to get desperate. He's like, I'm down to my last battery here. Uh, also, I collected some T-Rex here, and he's like, how'd you do that? He goes, oof, I'll tell you what. I had to uh, I had to sneak up on that thing while it was busy and milk it. Uh, Eric has been, uh, let's see, they talk a little shit about Malcolm, which I think is funny. And then Eric yeah, hears yeah. Compi's approaching, so he shuts the, the doors for the night. Uh, we see some really spiky dinos, and they look good. Uh, and Paul takes the opportunity to let Amanda off the hook for being a terrible parent. Uh, she tells me, she's like, I'm sorry you had to be here, to which Paul replies, I'm not. Uh, the next morning, Alan and Eric leave his makeshift camp, uh, while Billy, Paul, and, uh, Amanda head out to the coast. They're like, that's what, that's what they would do. So we're going to do the same thing, follow the plan. Alan spots a boat and they're like, okay, we're going to head to down toward that. Uh, Eric hears his dad's sat phone ringing and goes, Hey, that's my dad's ring. I know that. And, and, and you have to wonder, you're like, does the dad always have the sat phone or is this something that, you know what I mean? Like, he's Eric. like, how would you, he's like, I recognize that ring. It's like, mm, isn't that something specific that he got just for this? Like nobody. But yeah. To remember, it's not even so much the ring; it's the jingle. Right. So, is point. William H Macy the kind of guy who's like, "I need a sat phone to go save my son"? Thank you. And then on the plane, he's just fucking with. It. He's like, "Wait, I can make. I can go in there and go dee 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 dee, Electric Avenue. You know what I mean? Make it be this thing for his like fucking uh, appliance shop. Maybe he is Andy. Maybe he's like you, Andy. Maybe he has the gift of music. <laughs> Is this, gift twi- is this music. Twitter voice memo right now? <laughs> Maybe he has the gift of music like you, Andy. <laughs> I had to fill in some gaps. I had to fill in some gaps how this man who runs a plumbing supply store could also make a mini ringtone for himself on a satellite. Phone. Yeah. And what it is is that it turns out he's just like Andy. You hand this man a guitar, you hand him a jug. He gonna make you a song. Is a guitar like a guitar, but a good guitar? Is that what a guitar is? For audio <laughs> listeners, Greg rolled back into the back of his bed, in the back of this little room that he's broadcasting from to just go crazy. <laughs> oh, um, man. By the way, uh, yeah, Tim had already sent me the link, and I, I didn't see it in time, but um, the little kid is from a Disney Channel original movie, a DCOM, if you will, called mm. Genius, which started the lifelong crush of mine for Emmy Rossum. Like, that's that's where I was like, I love this woman, whoever she is, and I'm still in love with this woman, whoever she is, Emmy Rossum. Not one of my faves, genius. Not one of my faves. Oh, really? I kind of liked it. Anyway. And the night court theme is sent to Barrett. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Amanda. uh, 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 Billy. No, Alan spots a boat. They head toward it. Eric hears his dad's hat phone, and he runs toward it. Paul hears him calling out, and they reunite. In an idyllic field with a massive fence between them, uh, kind of a poo-poo on this moment. Billy spots his bag slung around Alan's shoulder. He's like, hey, man, I can carry that for you right now. And, and, and Alan's like, we have bigger shit to do right now. Why are you so fucking jonesing for this bag? Uh, Paul wants to know how they found each other, and Eric tells him that he heard his phone. Only one problem. Paul's like, my phone? I don't have my phone. I loaned it to Nash in the plane, and Nash got eaten. Oh, no. The phone is in the belly of this gi- dinosaur, and apparently dinosaur bellies paper thin. They turn around and spot Spino just staring yeah, at really him. Loud just like, yeah, I, was just, I guess so. Here's uh, the thing. This yeah. sucks. I really fucking like it, though. I really fucking it's like the dumb, the ringtone of the dinosaur. It's stupid as shit, but I'm like, I'm oh, in. Uh, let's see. They run, of course, and they find a little opening in the, the fence. And they run through and like, oh, thank God we're there. And then Spino's like, fuck you. It just pushes right through it because he's massive. So, thankfully, there's another enclosure just right there. And they run right into it. Uh, which I hate because like this dinosaur does not really have a skull structure that looks like it could break through that like it's all snout right and you think about like the structural integrity of a snout it's not like the big skull guys with the six inches thick of you know what I mean like I fucking always hated that I always hated that Uh, you're gonna knock yourself out you're gonna break your jaw doing that careful next time I mean you have to you have to hunt though hunt billy insists that alan gives him his bag back and then alan's like why do you want this bag so much and he opens it and he finally discovers whatever what all the hubble up is about he's stolen two raptor eggs which is why the raptors are hunting them down this is one of those things where it's like it was the same issue i had with the the t-rexes hunting down the baby rex 
I don't know if this is what would happen really in nature. And I know that I'm getting a little too specific here, but I'm like, there were a thousand eggs there. Would the entire group of raptors really hunt these people across Remember the they talk for him. two eggs? So they can say that, hey, like, hold up, my, my eggs are missing, y'all. And they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, did you, see go. These, what, did you see these? Deborah, did you see these eggs? Deborah. 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 Deborah, where are my eggs? Uh, oh. Of course, Billy took the eggs in hopes of selling them to fund the dig another 10 years. He didn't really think about anything, the ramifications. Uh, so he said, and then Dr. Alan Durant says, some of the things, the worst things imaginable have done with the best intentions. You're no better than the people who built this place. Uh, Alan fucked. moves to throw the eggs out the window but stops himself. And they're like, well, you got to get in. Uh, I think Paul says, what if they catch us with those things? He goes, what if they catch us without them? Right. What are we going to do if we don't have these eggs? Uh, so they head down toward the river and enter the fog. Uh, parts of the stairs rip apart and Alan uh, almost falls. And then he says, let's do this one at a time. So they have to go past this massive bridge one at a time. He heads across first, looks back, uh, and manages to get there unscathed. Amanda tries to talk Eric through it, but he lets her know. He's just like, I'll go with you. And he goes, I just survived for eight weeks on this island by myself. I think I got this. And then she goes, well, you're not by yourself anymore. We're all together now. And it's like, you're really driving this whole family thing home. Uh, Alan finds some, what do you call it, guano? Some bird poop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the rail and then realizes where they're at. This is not, they didn't just randomly build a staircase down to it's nowhere. They're in the middle of a giant bird cage. This is so good. It's so awesome. I love the, the, the way that they build the tension with all of it, the perfect fog layer. We've seen fog earlier in the movie. We know what could happen with all of this. Anything they send people the one by one, the separating the family, all of this. And then they do the thing Jurassic Park needs to do. Give the dinosaurs a hero moment. Give the fucking pterodactyl, pterodon, whatever the hell you want to call it. The moment where he comes through, there's the fucking music hit. I'm like, let's goddamn go. Love this shit. I love that shot. I love the shot where you think it's his mom walking toward him, or you th- she thinks it's like someone walking, and then it's not. It's the it's the pterodactyl. Like, good good Really Sick. scary. Also, they have like really long pelican beaks, and they're super scary. Um, let's see. It's always the shot where it slowly turns to the camera that always scared me as a kid. Like that shot will la- the same as like the signs one with the <laughs> Domino's children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, Eric comes face to face with Terry Dogwood, scoops him up for a midday snack for its little babies. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if they killed this kid right now? Like, what a fuck you to the audience. Uh, Billy decides to make up for his <laughs> still eggs. Fuck you to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, this whole thing was for not. Because really, you, you start to think about it. You're like, at the end of this movie, right? We're like, everyone's happy. Like, we got our kid back. But but Paul and Amanda are, in fact, basically uh, responsible for the deaths of, like, three people, right? Mm, mm. Like, they lied to everyone. That's criminal negligence. They're going to jail for life. Good luck, Interesting kid. points, did you, Nick. Did yeah. you enjoy uh, spending eight weeks by yourself, kid? Because you're going to have to spend the next... 20 to 30 years by yourself. There's also thing they think too, like, going to you're going to jail, jail <laughs> kid. <laughs> You've nailed it that all these people die, you know. I mean, they probably signed up knowing it, right? The th- real thing about it is like Alan Grant got over being knocked out so quickly. He literally he when he wakes up, he's like, Who knocked me out? And they're like, That guy. And he's like, All right, well, I'm pissed. At you. I'm not even that pissed, but let's talk about being on the eye. I'd be like, Whoa, wait a second. Like, I'm gonna go try to fuck this guy up. And I realized Alan Grant, pencil pusher, not doesn't have the ferocity. Greg Miller has all right. You know, oh, do you mean ferocity? No, I mean ferocity. Yeah, I strike yeah. fear like when I come at them with the ferociousness. All right, mm-hmm. and so that's the thing. Like you know what I mean? He's an Andy type. I'm a Greg type. There'd be a different thing, but there'd still be more of a conversation for the anger Alan Grant should have. And one of us would get caught by the dinosaur while running. One of us wouldn't. So well, I'm definitely the kind of guy who would push you down when the dinosaur started running at us. So it definitely wouldn't be me. And I still yeah, lap your ass four times. <laughs> like, Damn. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog over here. Like uh, said. Let's see. Billy decides to make up for stealing the eggs by jumping off the edge and pops the chute. And he saves Eric right before the baby dinos can eat him. But there's still Mama and her friends to contend with. And man, they come at him with a vengeance. Uh, everyone falls into the water and the cage smashes uh, one of the pterodactyls. Billy gets stuck on a cliff just like before, like we had a story before. And you're like, oh, really? his camera strap must have saved him. Uh, the pterodactyl <laughs> starts circling strap. with the kill. Never comes back. Uh, the, he, the cage falling on the... Um the the pterodactyl here this is like mm. the only point in the entire movie that i believe like it's an animal like the way that it was done and shot and stuff i was like yeah. it reminded me of like the better moments from Jurassic park hmm. that's nice um <laughs> thank you for billy, sharing that. <laughs> billy, <laughs> very sweet of you <laughs> <laughs> billy drops down into the water but gets picked up a moment later and pounced on and they start tearing into pieces while alan and paul watch and just see blood 
popping into the water and like bye bye Billy, which I think Billy should have died by the way. And then I know they try to make Billy a good guy, but at the end of the day, again, if we're if we're if we're bringing you know in the criminal justice system, if we're bringing charges against someone, Billy stealing the eggs is directly responsible for Udesky being having his fucking back ripped apart and his neck snapped. Act so Billy God. is a killer. As well. Act to God. I That's want Billy back. Consequences of actions. You can't worry okay. about that. I want sure. my Billy back, Billy back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, they tear him apart. And then uh, one of the pterodactyls turns its head real fucking scary. Like, <laughs> it looks at him, but it's like, you're next, basically. And it's super scary. Uh, they make it out of the aviary, but accidentally leave the door open. Uh, and it's, you start to wonder, like, I guess well, I guess they just fish because there's water coming through. But I was like, how do these pterodactyls survive if they can't get out of this aviary? And how come the whole thing's not covered with bird poop? Because I leave my car outside for five seconds and it's covered in bird poop. Do we think? Uh, um, is, do we think the goat from part one is the person in this movie? Is the person in this movie? Yeah. Oh, you mean like as far as like the like, Billy, the Billy goat? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that joke from mm-hmm. two weeks ago? I do remember it. Got I had to call it out because somebody in the comments are going to be like, "Wow, I can't believe they didn't call out the whole thing." Yeah. It is. It is worth. I mean, I don't know if Joey actually it, it put the which death is Beth. On, but I think the Udesky death needs to go up on there as yeah, well. Yeah, that's the Billy that's death. a Beth death. That's a Beth mm-hmm. death. Uh, let's see. Paul hotwires a boat and they cruise down the river. Amanda realizes she still loves him somehow. Eric tells Grant he's sorry about Billy, and Grant regrets his last words to his his uh, mentee. He says Billy was just young and stupid. Uh, he's like, there's two types of boys. They're the ones that want to be astronomers and the ones that want to be astronauts. And some people just want to touch fire. He goes, paleontologists never really get to go to space. Billy wants. To have the wants to have the adventure, he wants to touch things, ride the fucking lightning. He's like, I can't fault him for that. And as the sun breaks and they come into a clearing, uh, uh, Eric says, "You know something, Doctor Grant? Billy was right." Because they look over and they see a herd of beautiful dinos, and the theme kicks up. And I don't care. This movie's worth it. <laughs> this whole movie's worth it. <laughs> and then, of course, Alan turns to him as he says, "You know what, Doctor Grant? Billy was right." And Alan says, "I don't know if you understood the lesson I was trying to teach you right now, but it's been a long day, so I'll just let this slide." Later that oh, night. Also, hold on. I, I love the I, I don't exactly remember the sequencing of all this, but I'm pretty sure the, the big action scene where we get Kirby kind of being the hero. Did that just uh, happen? No, no, that hasn't happened yet. Okay, no, okay. it's coming up right okay. now. Gotcha. Continue. Uh later that night they hear it again, the horrifying sound of the sat phone, but this time it's not in uh, uh, uh the dinosaur, it's in a massive pile of spider poop. And I- That was really good. God damn. <laughs> it's just a little now, visual storytelling for you. A little yeah. You, that was audio visual storytelling. storytelling. Uh, can you audio. get the can you get the MIDI version of Electric Avenue? Because <laughs> that's yeah. what Greg said it was, and I like that. No, I didn't say, I knew it wasn't Electric <laughs> Avenue. I was just saying that's like the song you go to when you're talking about a MIDI ringtone, all right? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Also, can you uh please bring up footage of the ver- the the game Snake from my Nokia phone? Whatever <laughs> happened to fucking Night Court? You gave me the old cock tease. You said I'm sending the yeah, theme gonna, song to Barrett. I'm I mean, over you here. Wanna, you want to listen to that right now? All right. I'll tell you what though. If this Mr. Bucket's us, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed off. Harry Barrett, Anderson play the Night Court theme. That. Crank it. Listen to that, Andy. I've never heard this. <laughs> all, right. all right we can kill it we can kill it I, I need someone to clip out just greg's dance to that because it's like he's thought of it before <laughs> well i mean you know it's coming as a night court yeah. aficionado you know the build the cut is coming you guys weren't prepared you're like oh greg greg's being too loud that's what you guys were doing earlier and it turns out i was fucking perfectly mimicking the song <laughs> i do, would great. not have said that was a perfect mimic of the song. Well, it's because you're tone deaf andy and we don't want to tell you all wow. right someone can't harmonize uh, oh they look God. over the spinal poop and they just immediately dig in and it's kind of gross. And then another T-Rex like dino comes. Of course, again, that was the, uh, well, I don't know. I closed it. That was Doesn't the different matter. dinosaur, the, the Cretaceous dinosaur. Anyway, uh, and again, he looks over, he goes, Ooh, you guys smell like poo. And it reminds me of, of course, the classic scene, uh, from Joe dirt. And I say out loud, I got the poo on me. But they find the sat phone. Paul tells them that the only one, they only have one call left for some stupid reason, which is weird. He's like, oh, the minutes are almost done. Uh, and Alan has to use, he's like, you got to call someone. And he's like, all oh, the Costa Rican army is not going to give a shit. Even though I'm pretty sure they would give a shit. And like, listen, we're stuck on this island. Come, come. Not here. You to mention, remember, both. like, the whole thing was like, you know, on the approach, they were like, hey, unidentified thing. This is Costa Rica. Don't fucking do this. And then they just landed. And they were like, all right, well, not our problem. You know what I mean? I would think yeah. that you'd send something over there with a gun. 
They would be like, hey, listen, yeah. motherfuckers, we told you not to do this. Now you're under arrest by Costa Rican law. Mm-hmm. How many of you are directly responsible for the death of three people? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Eric sees a school of fish swimming the other way. Or so Alan's like, okay, I'm going to use it to call Ellie. Uh, but, but that little piece of shit son of hers answers. Uh, and Eric spots a school of fish swimming the, toward them. He's like, oh, something big, something wicked this way comes. So they try to get the engine on the boat, but it's too late. Spino's fin pops out of the water like Jaws. Uh, Charlie tries to, t- tries to give the phone to his mom, but this fucking idiot kid can't figure out how a doorknob works. Then he looks over and sees Bart and that just pulls his attention away from a dinosaur see yeah. mm-hmm. 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 perfect and the kid just starts jumping up and down you're like god do you, how do you you know is, is this is this what you're stuck with forever uh alan and the team lock themselves into the cage and ellie calls him back he manages to tell her sight be the river before the cage knocks into the water and he's dead forever and of course Guys, ellie knows exactly what's up there sight be the river <laughs> She knows. And we see these fucking islands. Site B is just the second island. So what they said was the second island, the river. Yeah. How many fucking rivers are going to be on hey this Hey, man, he, they didn't even need it. They didn't even need it. They got. They ran into the exact point they landed on fucking <laughs> exactly. coming. All right, so Don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about the river being the problem. The fucking point, they, the coincidence to land on the exact oh my fucking God. point these people are going to surface from. Tim, you're going to sit here and act like you and I don't have a special code. When I call you and I say Site C, the river, you know we're, we're supposed to go to Jenny Burger. You know that, right? I mean, I know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see. Paul gets thrown from the cage and swims hard toward a crane that's somehow in the water. I think it was on the boat while the Spino goes fishing for Amanda. Alan finds a flare gun and shoots it at the Spino, but the flare bounces off his thick skin and lights the fuel uh, on top of the water ablaze, uh, lighting the Spino as well. It runs off on fire, and he goes... Uh, 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 I don't know. He pops his head up. Oh, sorry. Uh, Amanda, Amanda's like, oh, no, you can't leave me like this. And then, of course, uh, Paul pops his head up safe and sound of mobile air. says, I'm not going anywhere. And it's supposed to be very hard. Wow. So kind of, Why does it, this kind of movie? You swim like, wh- two yards over there. I didn't even hear you or see you. Wow. What is it about this franchise where they think it's okay to just have somebody seven the yards off the camera? <laughs> like, what? Like it, even again, that we see this again with the Army and Navy coming in to save the day at the end. <laughs> like, where did they fucking just, you know, come into frame from? It makes no sense. It makes. Well, no Andy, sense. I don't know so how your I don't know how your vision works, but I see with roughly a telescopic <laughs> lens. I don't see in like a wide angle. I see just basically whatever's right in front of me. Like no peripheral vision. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, they hear the ocean and they run for it, but they're suddenly surrounded by raptors. And then she's like, they, Alan's like, they want the eggs. Otherwise we'd be dead already. And Alan tells everyone to get down. They're challenging us. One of the raptors gets all up in Amanda's grill and she tells Alan to give her the eggs. He does so and spots the 3D printed raptor collar in Billy's bag underneath the eggs. And so he uses it to call and the raptors go nuts. And then Paul's like, no, you're doing the wrong call. You have to replicate the call for help that they did. And Alan's like, what? <laughs> like, how did you even <laughs> fucking know that? You you picked that up from the one second earlier. You're a paint and hardware guy. It doesn't matter. He does that. And, of course, all the Raptors are like, oh, no, one of our friends is in need. We have to go. It's much more important than killing our lunch right now. So they run off in search of their friend in need. And the last two Raptors, of course, kind of look them in the eye. And then one picks up the egg. And then the other picks up the egg. And then they run off. And go, bah, 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 bah. Uh, Paul hears a helicopter. And they run to shore. When they get there, of course, the only person standing on shore like some sort of fever dream is a guy in a suit with a megaphone and he starts calling back to them. And then everyone starts telling that's a very bad idea. But then they look literally to Andy's point three feet to the right and see the entire Costa Rican Navy and Marines there. The and whole then platoon. And then Eric's like, wow, now you have to thank Ellie. And it's like, well, I mean, he's going to thank her anyway. Also, it turns out Billy's not dead. Spoilers. Plot twist. He learned a very valuable lesson. Always reach for the stars like an astronaut. And what could possibly go wrong? You'll just live. Also, he rescued Alan. He Pat, sucked so the lucky forgiven. his lucky bag into his wound to stop exactly. the bleeding. He was like, "It was on my back," but I, I just shoved <laughs> it in there with the with the help of a tree. Uh, don't worry about the fact that his actions led to Udesky's snapped neck. Nobody really cares about that. <laughs> he saved Alan's hat. On the helicopter ride back, the pilot spots something terrifying in the air, and then someone says, "Doctor Grant, look uh, out the port side window." Alan sees a flock of pterodactyls flying beside them, uh, like the harbingers of death that we all know them to be, and everything and everyone is just pretty cool about it. The end. I mean, it's funny. So obviously, that's a allusion to the the first movie where they look out. There's the birds. And now it's the pterodactyls. Mm-hmm. But uh, the the hat thing is so funny to me, and it kind of contextualizes this movie in a in an interesting way where there is such a reverence for Spielberg in this whole movie where it mm-hmm. is kind of more of an Indiana Jones vibe than there is a Jurassic Park vibe. There's yeah, having dinosaurs mm-hmm. instead of like other 
things chasing after them. And uh, the fact that they treat Alan Grant kind of like Indiana Jones and like his hat is like a defining feature of him and it has to be saved at all costs. is like kind of a silly thing, but I, I appreciate it. But going back to Andy's uh, favorite, cam- obviously, what's his name? Ubunsky, Nick? Udesky. Is your favorite character? Udensky. I'm a big big fan of Billy here. Uh, Andy's number one thing is the skeleton. Uh, but that, that skeleton, clearly an Indiana Jones reference, you know? So it's like yeah. I thought that there was oh, a lot yeah. of stuff going on that's kind, oh, yeah. kind of interesting. I mean, even, even the, like I said, even the music cues in this are very, very, very Indiana Jones as he's, like, going through the, the, the jungles in the very first movie. Um, you, you have those here, so they're absolutely trying to throw that out. But I like that Alan is literally the polar opposite of Indy, where he's like, I, I'm so fucking boring. You know, I could make, I could watch paint dry and it'd be more entertaining. And that's Jurassic Park 3, The Return of Isla Sorna. <laughs> Everyone's favorite island of mm-hmm. Jurassic Park. Uh, Andy Cortez, please hit me with haiku and review. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. Love, love, love. If it's not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like so many of you did, including Nakash to write your reviews in haiku form. Uh, Nakash says, Raptor says, Alan, what the fuck is this movie? Cool spino fight, though. Uh, we got Grant Burton writing in saying, return Grant to the park, Burton. experience Grant the Burton. thrill ride. Oh, no, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it does end just yeah. out of nowhere. It's pretty quick. Uh, Joe Merton says, it's not that awful. Unused book content, the film. No sexy Malcolm. Um, and then miscellaneous, of course, writes the plot in haiku. Granelli, through awkward scene between the two. Even smelly. Oh. <laughs> boring lecture two. <laughs> Allen's Island bound. Real reason has not been found. Disaster on ground. Raptors make their bid. Up the trees, they ran and hid. Allen found the kid. Stole eggs from the batch. Thought they would sell well when hatched. Eric just got snatched. Flee wow. with no delay from dinos. They get away. Ellie saves the day. So you crushed go. it. Absolutely crushed, crushed it. it. Um, so now I guess let's do it. Ragu Vagu. Oops. Da-da. One second. Da-da. Sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. 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 Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rag Guys Talk Bad Guys here for the Jurassic Park in Review series at number one. The venerable Wayne Knight as Nedry. Number two, Ludlow and Roland from Lost World. Where do we want to put the Spinosaurus <laughs> and the Velociraptors? I mean, it's last. Yeah, yeah. dead. There's like no, as we said, there's no antagonist to this. Yeah. Movie. Just, just the chat was happened. saying maybe Billy. Maybe Billy is the antagonist. Billy. No, not that. No, Billy's the hero. <laughs> maybe the <laughs> Ducky Bonsky. <laughs> It's that, like there is no there is none like they're like when we're comparing it to the other bad guys on this list like this movie fails. I mean regard. they're not wrong. Billy is sort of the impetus from some of it. I, you could also argue that Paul and Amanda are the bad guys because they completely lied to everyone and totally. put everyone in a very dangerous very life threatening situation true. just to save their kid. While that might be might have been for altruistic reasons, uh, it, it still kind of is. Bad. I'd still be like this. We're not like two years later. They're like, "Oh my god, we saw you guys at the Jurassic Park reunion." I'd be like, "We're still not cool." Yeah, we're I just not. Want cool. You guys know that this is not something. I got a minor concussion, like and a lot of people died because you lied to me. How's the paint and hardware store? It's doing good. I'm glad to hear it. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad three. you could put you that go. aside. I'm glad you'd be able to put that aside. It's the last go out the business, the family. Well, business. I don't. I mean, they have a kid. They have to, you know, they have to take care of. And this kid's pretty cool. He didn't do anything wrong except for going parasailing. Which again, I've argued, don't go parasailing. Don't go. Don't swim with sharks if you don't want to get eaten by a shark. You know what I mean? That's their world. Yep, mm-hmm. he said so this many put, times, everybody don't act like he hasn't. We'll put the Spinosaurus and Velociraptors and Billy and Paul and Amanda at number three. Number, or the next thing is dinosaurs. Which death is the best? <laughs> Currently, number one is the Nedry death from Jurassic Park 1. And number two is the dual T-Rex takedown of the fate from the Lost World. That was for you, Nick. Um, cool. What do we think is the most iconic death, d- dino death of this movie? And where does it rank? I think it's the Udesky snapping of the neck where it just looks down and snaps his neck and then moves on. And, and I would include that entire scene, right, of him getting stabbed yeah. in the back, taken yep, down, uses his bait. Yeah, that. Incredible. That, that I would vote that at number three. Number three. Out of these ones, yeah. Nedry still I the see that the, the guy getting torn in half is really dope. And then this is a cool one. I'm not taking away from it, but it doesn't compare. I'd go number three as well. 
I would put it at number two only because the setup of it being a trap, I think, is adds cool. an extra layer of dopeness to it. It's yeah, scary. It's scary. And uh, I'm we're, with we're, on that one. We're tied. So, Joey. We're tied. We're going to have to. Next week, we'll ask Joskis. Yeah. Joski. You Devskis. Joskis. You Joski. Play well, next week, again. we're not going to be here. Bow, right? bow. Oh, well, yeah. Jurassic World time. We'll, we'll be back for this one. Uh, but now it's time to rank. The Jurassic movies currently number one, Jurassic Park, and number two, The Lost World. Jurassic Park. Uh, this is number two. Yeah, I would say this is number two. JP three is number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's just the Andy. movie is. Go ahead. Yeah, Go I put it. I put it at number two as well. Uh, reluctantly. <laughs> Good. I wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> Sorry. Continue, Nick. No, I was gonna say I think the movie is just way more enjoyable and entertaining than the second one because it just the second one just drags so much with characters you don't care about and action sequences that go on for way too long. We can all agree, like the the RV sequence. Um, this one at least has some, I think, some creative stuff. And I keep coming back to it by by the end of most of these movies. I'm like, we can end this, but we get to the pterodactyl birdcage part, and I'm like, oh, this is a cool scene. This is this is something that's unique that we haven't seen in the series yet. So I put this at number two. Yeah, I'm really interested if anything can beat this and i don't think anything's going to for that number two clearly i have very very little faith i haven't seen jurassic world 2 but i haven't heard good things jurassic world 3 i doubt it's gonna be that high up there but but hopefully it is i hope it's good baby it does it does um so we'll have to see but currently the rankings are number one jurassic park number two jp3 Number three, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Thank you so much for joining us for this adventure next week. Like I said, we're returning to MCU with the Doctor Strange rewatch. But until then, I love you all. Goodbye.